Good morning! It's fucking early for me, but today it's Omega 34 and I'm excited! Let's go! Never leave the house without a coffee. It's Omega time. Control your destiny. So I guess this is the place. Let's get in. Of course, it was the wrong entrance, but I got my stuff here. I got a floppy disk and the program and my wrist stuff here. So the first thing I saw when I was entering the venue was this child having fun on a 1200. And that was great. This tables belong to the Return magazine. Um, I'm not into magazines that much, so, but if you are, here's the link to those guys. Up next, Factor 5. Here with some great Tarrican stuff. They had the first A1000 that I ever saw in real life. Here it is. Yeah. And then they have this arcade thing that I played. I don't know the technique behind it, but it was great fun. And here we have a very shiny little monitor. I like that thing very much. This is Hulsbeck. Yeah, it's Chris Hulsbeck. He signed a disc for me and somehow, yeah, I went to be an Audi engineer later in my life. And I think this guy, yeah, he did something for that when I was a child and listened to his stuff. Up next here we have the final years, the new book by those guys who are doing the documentary about Amiga. And right here we have the FPGA sit. That thing was in space. No shit, you can check it out on the homepage. And it sounds like this. Here's some stash, some bazaar. And um, then there's the vampire stuff. Oh my god, high-tech Amiga stuff. I'm not very much into that, but if you are kind of into that stuff, check out the homepage. They had a shitload of machines running there. You better check it out for yourself, because I'm, I'm really no expert in this. They were also running this coffin um, thing, which is a collection of stuff, like an OS for these machines. And yeah, that's that's really high-tech Amiga. Not my case, but, but it's impressive. Up on the next table, we have a girl again, playing some tiny little slug which is a new game by Slay Me and Explorer. Um, it's, it's a charming platform, I have to say. It's, it's really cool, I enjoyed it, and those guys do great work here. Have a look at that CRT and that graphics. It's awesome. And look at that Bubble Bubble guys on top of the monitor. I love Bubble Bubble. And in this corner we have some new graphic card for the Amiga, like it's called the ZZ9000. It does more like that, it has an Ethernet interface, an SD card interface and a lot of stuff, but that's very futuristic. And here is the opposite of that, this is the table of the Commodore story, which is a documentary about Commodore. Earlier I said they do the Amiga story, it, it's the Commodore story of course. Um, there are over 60, 16 hours of interviews and 
you can order the books and a lot of other interesting stuff if you're in into um, the history of Commodore. And that guy here is David Pleasant, who was the boss of Commodore UK, signing some books. That guy was playing Amiga on a Surface. I didn't check out the table. As I don't want to cut this, here's some timetable for you. next we have Hyperion. They are working on Amiga OS 4.1, which is stuff for the PowerPC Amiga ar architecture. Excuse my bad English, but I'm a German guy. That's for like the Amiga X5000, the X1000, the Pegasus, the Cyberstorm, the Blizzard and all that stuff. So on, on the other side, there's another Amiga OS compatible um, the system called MorphOS, which I tried on my Mac G4, but they take about 70 euros for it. Um, Amiga OS costs 30 euros. And that was the barrier why I didn't buy it. I used it like once a month and I, I really didn't want to spend 70 euros for uh, an operating system that I'm using on a piece on a, uh, on a computer that costs me like 40 bucks and I don't use very often. But if you're into this, check it out. On this table we have some point and click game called, what was it called? The Secret of Middle City. And it looked cool, but it's ob obviously for the power PC stuff. So I wasn't into that at all, but I'm gonna take a look at it. Maybe I'm gonna play it on emulation if it's really good. Yeah, we, we, we'll see. On that very long and sexy next table, we have the software um, image FX. I don't know what to do with it because really if I want to do image FX I use PC or Linux stuff. So this wasn't interesting for me too. I'm sorry I don't want to disappoint you guys but if I want to do office or, or, or professional picture stuff I, I, I use Windows or I use Linux but I don't, I don't want to use Amiga to, to run LibreOffice or something like that. Um, here you can see the stuff that uh, Amiga Kit had there, and that was a shit ton of it. Very interesting stuff, like cables, adapters, and holy shit, you see it. Like labels and ah, all, all crazy stuff. And this here, this is a real beauty. A1200 with a black keyboard. Oh my god, what a sex machine. Up here we have Gold Rush, which I think it was originally a Sierra game, which those guys remaked for PC and then for Amiga. And on the next table we had the new Amiga keyboards. I tried them for a while, but I didn't quite like them. I wanted to have some uh, Cherry MX Blue switches in it, that would be cool, but those just felt like mechanical, but not the way I want to use it on Amiga. And by the way, this is um, Trevor Dickinson. Yeah, I, I made a photo with him and David Pleasants on that day. Those guys are, are, are crazy funny and they have a positive attitude on all Amiga stuff. So, yeah. Here's a transparent Amiga 1200 case, which is coming from the Kickstarter campaign some years ago, I guess. It looked pretty awesome. And 
here we arrived at the Checkmate A1500 case by, um, it was Stephen Jones, who's a really nice guy, and he took a photo with me. And look at that, beauties. You can put your Amiga 500 mainboard, your components, in, into this case, and then you have a desktop Amiga, which is not what I want to have, but that's that's stunning. You can put the keyboard under that thing, like the, I guess the 1000 had that too. Sorry, I'm too young to care. <laughs> Just kidding. But the, those cases, they look uh, fine quality, I can tell you that. Here is a ton of, of wicked stash, old stash for Amiga computers. Like this video combo thing, I don't even know what it is. It's like a video toaster and uh, floppy drives of that kind I have never seen before. Games and cards and what have you. Here you have the opportunity to play Atomic Bomberman with eight SNES controllers. Yeah, why not? It was great fun. And this beauty was owned by NASA, which is cool. God damn it, it's official property of NASA. Like they do calculations for space and shit on this 2500. So no, no wonder they are so successful in what, what they're doing, as long as they use Amigas for that. Heading over to Alinea Computer, which is an online shopping mall for the good Amiga shield. They had some interesting shirts and posters. They had some competition pros. They had this awesome Tarikan LPs. Oh my god, a little bit expensive for me, but they look great. There's a vampire running the reshooter by Richard Löwenstein. And I was talking to um, Mr. Löwenstein. He um, signed a disc for me. And he told me that he had to program a lot of stuff uh, very tightly to run on this uh, vampire hardware. But they did it. And it, I can tell you, it's, it's, it's running smooth there. It's running really great. And reshooter is a game you definitely have to check out. One of the biggest magazines for Amiga, Amiga Future, was there. As I have told you before, I'm not that magazine guy, but impressive selection they had there. Really. Jesus Christ. Over here we had some dude. Blame Sensible Soccer. What a good dude. You're good, sir. You're doing it right, play some sensible soccer, god damn it. That's the area where I was hanging around a lot. It was a smoking area, I don't smoke but I wape and it was like nice temperatures out there. Here we have some boxes and lots of stuff on the next table, which was a mixed table of uh, some guys. Um, let's see what we have over there. Here's some high-tech, high-end Amiga running OS 4.1. And a game called Hurricane. <laughs> I didn't notice that at all. Okay, funny things were going on there. Oh, there's an ACA 500 Plus. I have this. It's... Oh, it's so great. It's it's the best thing you can do for your 500. Um, here's we shoot our on a CD32. CD here's a joystick. Maybe I'm a noob now, but um, I don't know what joystick it was. I played it and it was awesome. God damn it, it was awesome. Maybe you guys know what it is and you laugh at me, but it, it was cool. I don't know what it was. And here was some kind of management. Here's the, here's the um, transparent 81200 in action with a black keyboard. Which is awesome, it looks good.
right in this corner guys i'm really not sure who runs these two tables but they had new amiga 3000 boards and they had a new amiga 1200 board i posted two links to sources that might be the right ones please um, if if you got the right sources for this put it in the comments uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that This guy has a nice, a very nice beard, and he knows it. He knows he has a nice beard. Um, this is um, Virtual Dimension, which is a German YouTube channel. They are some crazy guys. And somehow they are working on a game that's called Cybermove for a time now. It looked great, but you have to check it out for yourself. And here where the live talks the the sound was very noisy because all the people were talking and walking and doing all the crazy stuff so they pulled this curtain later on which improved the acoustic um, the sound a bit but it wasn't perfect I wish there were a separate room this is Dan Wood yeah YouTube legend for Commodore Amiga stuff I really wanted him to sign me a disc but on Sunday I was waiting for him, but he didn't, he, he didn't show up, so I think he was checking out the German pubs very bravely. Um, this is the Creek Stick. This is the package of the Creek This is the Creek Stick. The other one was the package of it. I played it. It's a very sturdy new joystick coming from Kreese. I played it here with the Reshoot R, the new uh, shooter game by uh, Richard Löwenstein. And there he is, Petro. Tuschchenko, I hope I pronounced it right, one of the key persons bringing Commodore to the European market. He's a legend. Here was some guy playing PP Hammer on a golden A1200. Fair enough. This is a real black beauty. I mean, I really love the, the screen and black. And the, the CD TV was a, was a cool machine. And this is Descon. This is the guy I met up there. This was one of the reasons I was traveling there because, you know, this all this stuff is cool, but meeting people that you're really interested in to me, that's the cool shit. And that happened there. And Descon is a, a great musician, a great and funny guy. and. Yeah, we had a lot of fun and he introduced me to a lot of interesting people. Um, this was like a, a monochrome something on a Sage 2, which is obviously somehow Commodore compatible. And holy shit, I don't like white computers, but this is an exception. This looks exceptionally good. A white Amiga. Jesus Christ, check it out. It, it was awesome with this glass plate, so you can see what's going on inside. Cool thing, man. The same, um, I can tell about this Amiga. They just ripped some shit off and put some glass and LEDs in and I'm totally in. Yeah. Here we see a usual 600 and a nice mouse. Holy fuck. What is that? What a power supply. You can watch it work. I was a little bit pissed about that they didn't sell any alcohol, no beers. So I had to bring my own there. I don't know if, if it was allowed, but I did do it. And it was cool. And I was kind of getting drunk. This is a, this is a brown Schweiger, by the way. I don't know what it is, but it's a brown Schweiger. And it's red and it's Amiga. So here at the table, I thought I would meet the um, developer of the, all this stuff, but it's the guy 
doing the packaging of all this stuff, the production of the physical stuff. And he does produce some new um, external floppy cases for Gotex and real floppies. So you can put in your old PC drive or new PC drive and a Kyroflux or an Arduino as an interface. So you have a complete solution to write and read ADF on PC and it's looking good. This was a beauty. I don't even know what it was exactly, but it was so nice. And this was signed by a lot of cool people that I don't know. And I gave no fucks about it, but it's looking great. It's, it's confusing because what the fuck is it? Yeah, but, but it's cool. Heading over to a real useful one. These are new dust covers for your Amiga. And that's what every one of you needs because you want to keep it clean. So it will run 30 years from now because Amiga is forever. Ravy Abbott incoming, a cool guy that I found on YouTube is related to Dan Wood and the Retro Owl podcast and stuff like that and he was on the Retro Man Cave, which I like a lot, check out Neil's Retro Man Cave, he's a great guy. So that was that, but I had to add some stuff to the end of the video. First of all, I'm sorry for the shaky quality. I had a 60 euro camera here, no uh, stabilization or something. Uh, I had a, the, the voiceover I'm doing right now, I'm not doing on my studio mic, I'm doing it on a 20 euro China mic, because Da Vinci doesn't give a fuck about my audio interface. I didn't even plan to film it, but in the end, I was happy to, that I took my camera with it and I filmed it and I could leave you some impressions. And what, what's important to me is to point to the demo scene. Because on the second day, on the Sunday, there was Daskan and a few other guys giving a real good talk about um, the demo scene. And I, for myself, am a visitor of Revision for the last three years and I can I can tell you you guys have to go there if you like Amiga stuff and you like the crack throws the intros or you like the music or you like the guys doing stuff on it come to a uh, revision Germany it's on Eastern every year and there are about 800 to 1000 people really really appreciating um, the retro computer scene yeah, in a in a very in a very creative way. Yeah. I for myself I have a Twitch channel. I stream retro stuff or random bullshit once a week or something like that. I would appreciate if you follow me there. That would be cool. I also have a band called Vampires and Tomato Juice. I'll put links here because in the near future I'm gonna release the third album. And I'm working very hard on it. It's gonna be for the metalheads as well as for the open-minded alternative guys. Yeah, um, you also heard um, a Terrican 2 remix that I did that you can find on SoundCloud. I also met some interesting guys who are working on a new Genesis this version for the C64, like the 30th anniversary edition or something like that. They have it on CSDB, the previews for that. There are two previews. I played the um, current version of it and I really liked it and the, those guys are really cool dudes. So check that out too, please. I want to give some shoutouts to some great 
which YouTube Amiga guys like Amiga Bill, which I absolutely love. Greetings to you, Amiga Bill. Love you, dude, doing the great stuff alongside with the Guru Meditation YouTube channel that he does with his friend Anthony. I want to shout out Hitch the B on Twitch, which is going here, and Mr. Cola, which is a great guy too, doing a lot of Amiga stuff. Also, I want to shout out the Haze Maker. He's doing C64 streams mainly, but he also does Amiga stuff. Here's his link. And uh, Vicky Pixel Vixen, which is um, a girl doing very cool pixel art stuff on YouTube. So you gotta check her out. If you don't know the 8-Bit Guy, which is a YouTube channel, he's uh, tinkering around on a new system, which is pretty much ready to be produced. It's an 8-bit computer with, yeah, better graphical abilities and it's gonna have a nice sound chip. I hope so. And the emulator is ready at this point, so people started doing graphical demos and stuff like that and programming like little tools for it. Um, I'm looking very positive into this direction. Um, Michael Steyer, who is a genius in 6502 programming, does the kernel and if you've seen his talks on 6502, which I'm gonna link here, holy shit, this guy is awesome. So keep an eye on that, because there will be stuff, a lot of stuff, games and demos and software coming for this machine, and the machine's gonna be affordable. And even if you can't afford it, you can use the emulator. So this is a project that um, my heart is very well into. So yeah, keep an eye on that too, please. I met Dave Haney there, who was one of the chief engineers at Commodore at some time, and he's such a chilled and awesome dude. Thank you for the photo, it, it, it was nice to meet you in person. And here's the crew. That's the reason why Amiga 34 was so good for me, so nice. On the left we have Dascon. I'm a really big fan of this guy. He does music for demos for the track music competitions and for games and crack shows he did stuff. Then we have Dan Scott. Dan Scott was there with Dascon. He's a guy from the UK who worked at Core Design. Things like Rick Dangerous, Rick Dangerous 2 and so on. He's uh, really into a lot of projects and he's again doing assembly on Amiga. He's into the demo scene. He's a great guy, a very friendly and cool guy, and he knows how to smuggle beer. Um, next up we have Virgil, which is a multi-talent, mainly musician. I don't even know how to describe that guy. Such a friendly dude, and all of his music is awesome, and he's doing it on all different platforms, for clang and exotic shit. And his programming assembler, he's a genius. And the guy on the right, well, that's me. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.